Snapchat, let's discuss machine learning, narrow AI, and big data, and how that links back to like this whole computational universe idea of blockchains and fractals. Whoa, yeah. So I think the Google CEO recently said that we're moving away from like a mobile first world where companies will start developing for a mobile first, then they'll do their website, to an AI first world, a narrow AI. And at the core of that is this idea of machine learning or um, neural networks, where you basically, in an abstract level, you feed data in, it does crazy stuff, and then spits out an answer. Now, we already use these systems every day. I mean, when you type in Google and you spell something wrong, that autocorrect is a neural net. That's a machine learning algorithm. That's a, that's a form of narrow AI. You upload a photo to Facebook and it, it says, like, do you want to tag your friend? And it tries to guess who it is, or it automatically tags it because it already knows who it is. That's another form of uh, narrow AI. High frequency trading in the stock markets. Uh, our entire financial system, our entire stock markets, like, it, most of it already is just AI trading with each other, trying to, like, flow capital to the best place. If you follow the tech startups scene, AI is massive at the moment. There's a ton of capital, there's a ton of investment flowing into AI-based startups that are focusing on very niche problems. So one example is like X.AI, a big one. And so what they're doing is using narrow AI to focus on just one very small subset, one very small problem, which is how do you coordinate a meeting between people, you know, the back and forth calendar, trying to work out the perfect time. Okay, so I haven't played around enough with machine learning to tell you exactly how it works. I have a very layman view on it, but that's a good kind of uh, a good position to be in. So the abstract view of what machine learning is and what it could be. So the layman's view of how it works is basically you upload a shitload of data sets, um, whatever data you, you have and, and have access to, you feed it into a machine learning algorithm, it just iterates over and over and over. So it passes all that data through a neural network, which is basically like a digital representation of uh, structure in the brain, kind of similar. Um, it rates, does a bunch of iterations and tries to find patterns. With each successive iteration over the data, it improves itself slightly. Um, so it'll, it'll come out, it'll spit out this, this kind of algorithm that you don't know how it works, it's a black box. So that's an example, a mate of mine has been playing around with machine learning, uh, looking at the stock markets and seeing how he can create his own trading algorithms to just own the stock market and never have to work again. So the latest thing he was testing out and he, sh and he showed us was that um, he basically downloaded all the Bitcoin volume transactions, uh, the price of Bitcoin and the price of the US dollar, and just grabbed all that data. He's then using some open source machine learning libraries and he used some like uh, some tree matching algorithm, I don't know, it goes over my head, um, and he got that to run over that data 4,000 iterations. So the whole aim of this, uh, this uh, algorithm was basically to say, okay, given the price of Bitcoin and the price of US dollars, should we buy more Bitcoin or should we convert it back to US dollars? Like, what do we do? I think that's called arbitrage. Maybe. Currency arbitrage? Yeah. <laughs> so after giving it all this historical data, this machine learning algorithm, and it, it generates its own algorithm as to how it, it think it should trade, given the, the patterns it's found, he then ran it over the last three months. The, the first graph he showed us, it like failed, like, you know, from a, from a portfolio starting point of $10,000, it just basically returned $10,000 or it went down. But then he went back and tweaked it a little bit more and the next graph he showed us, it had gone from like $10,000 in the last like three months ago to $25,000, so 250% increase. So now he has an algorithm that he knows will probably work. So now he can start testing that on the live markets, you know, actually just start putting in a, a limited amount of money and just trialing that in the live market. The cool thing about this, this is just one guy using open source libraries to do this. That's really insane. I wonder if you were to get to the point where you can put $1,000 in, use machine learning, and then never have to work again. Now the other cool thing that's developing is a lot of companies are starting to offer like cloud-based um, machine learning as a service, AI as a service. So the big one uh, that Google's got is called TensorFlow. So I played with TensorFlow once, and it was really complicated. Um, I think I had this image in my mind of what it should have been, but it was way too, it was more technical than I expected, so I couldn't work out how to use it. I feel like the ultimate form of machine learning tool would be something where, like an online based thing like that where it's using Google servers and all their own back-end infrastructure, but you just literally dump all the data you have into a box. So you would just say like, here's all the data I have access to, um, here's some of the other data I'd like to access, um, here's some APIs for live data, and you just throw it all in and you just press play. Uh, Google, the TensorFlow would then somehow just automatically work out which is the best algorithm to use and it'd find patterns. And it would just start spitting out, like in a, in a nice GUI, it'd just start spitting out a few outcomes, a few examples. Then you could quickly just look through and see like, oh, that, that graph or that outcome is exactly what I'm after. That's what I want. You know, that, that Bitcoin US dollar thing. If you see the thing go up, you're like, yeah, I want that one. And then without having to have any technical crazy knowledge and picking the right sort of uh, uh, machine learning algorithm, you very instantly are given feedback to that system saying, here's the data input, here's the output I want. Then ideally it should just be able to like loop through that uh, many, many times, like, you know, millions and millions of iterations to improve upon that outcome even more. Like rather than getting a 250% increase, you should be getting like 10,000% increase then you don't even need to know what the algorithm is. That's the cool thing about machine learning, is it's kind of like literally a black box. You just, the, the, the algorithm in the middle is so complicated, you don't even know. You just put inputs in and get outputs out. 
Now, if a tool like that can be realized, we suddenly start moving into this concept of like general purpose machine learning algorithms. Kind of like back in the days of when we first discovered general purpose computing. I mean, in the early days of uh, the development of computers, when we first discovered like uh, Turing complete, you know, um, general purpose computing, it meant you could have one computer and run literally an infinite number of computations. So the uh, the holy grail of like machine learning would be literally you throw any problem set at it, anything you possibly want, you give it the data, and the algorithm learns and it just spits out an answer. Yeah, general purpose AI, the algorithm that is able to look at any problem and create algorithms to solve those problems. You know, uh, yeah, that would be intense. It's kind of trying to seek like the RNA of computing. I mean, like um, it'll be like a Cambrian explosion in the computing world when a single purpose AI, a single purpose algorithm can evolve any type of algorithm to be any problem. With something like that, perhaps we could feed all the universal uh, equations and algorithms we know, like all the, all the laws of physics um, into this system. It just finds the patterns and finds the single equation. I mean, just like the complexity of the Mandelbrot set and fractals, and just like the complexity of the universe, um, and just like the complexity of the algorithms that machine learning process kind of spits out, they, they all begin as very, very simple equations. I mean, the, the equation for the Mandelbrot set is z equals z squared plus c. The equation for the universe is probably something very similar. But see, even the simplest algorithm, the simplest computation, uh, down to the, the smallest level, if you iterate it over many times, there's a form of computational irreducibility, meaning you don't know where it goes because it branches off into fractal cases. In machine learning, the more iterations you make over that same process, the, the more it evolves, the more complex that equation gets. It might start off as a very, very simple equation, but it gets vastly more complex. And the universe is a vast computational construct. I mean, all of these things around us are all little computations running and processing, um, but they all probably began as a very simple original equation. In every atom, there are, there are electrons buzzing around, computing in some way. It may not be like our form of computing, um, but also in like every cell, there's all this vast, complex computational stuff going on. Then you scale up to like multicellular organisms, you scale up to things like uh, the lungs, the brain structure, all the computation is happening there. Um, the universe, waves, energy, galaxies. It's all just very much like a fractal uh, layered computational process, like computation on computation on computation. It gets more and more complex and vast over time with each iteration. <laughs> and since 99% of this and all of this is just all empty space with just electrons flowing around, basically just energy, things computing, that leads to the simulation theory a little bit. Like hell, you can even see the fractals and the patterns in everything. Trees and plants are the easiest ones. I mean, like, branches, 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 branches. Right out to the tips, still branches. And see, we know this entire plant is like an informational computational process. I mean, it began as a seed, and within that seed, it has DNA, and the DNA is essentially its algorithm, its starting point, its, its starting algorithm. So I think it'd be cool with the rise of bioinformatics if we start actually uh, reverse engineering uh, particularly like genomes and DNA and working out exactly how it works so that we can reverse engineer this plant back down to its base algorithm. Okay, let's see if I can bring this back to blockchains. <laughs> um, so in the beginning, the, you know, there was hydrogen, yeah? And we know that all the other heavier elements were forged in stars exploding and then like reforming and exploding so that, you know, things like carbon, all the stuff, all the atoms that we're made of were furnished in stars. We are star stuff. And from the theory of evolution and from what we've done with our DNA sequencing of different species, we know that we're all linked back to a single point, a single cell, essentially, in the primordial super. So when you compare that back to like the Ethereum blockchain, um, they actually call the original block the Genesis block. Um, and so that's kind of like the beginning of that evolutionary tree in the digital world. And with blockchain technology, it's very much like a fractal branching tree, like a neural network, like, a, like neural pathways in your brains, like galaxies, like um, trees. They're all fractals, all linked together. Such that when you write a smart contract, a little uh, decentralized app on the blockchain, and you deploy it to the blockchain, it's interlinked on that single stem, but it's all branched out and fractaled out, so it's all connected. And smart contracts are algorithms. Smart contracts are having coded information that's decentralized and distributed on the system, much like DNA, much like the algorithms of these plants. So perhaps this is crazy, but like, so the genesis block of the universe was one equation that gave us atoms and everything, matter, time. Um, the genesis block of biology gave us like DNA and RNA and evolution and life and everything you see around you. That's pretty cool. And so perhaps the genesis block of the Ethereum blockchain will give us the next evolution, the next higher order knowledge, uh, generate AI, the computational universe, and the next kind of uh, wave of everything. There's something about fractals, man. Snap your thoughts, let me know. Uh, rambling, ranting, weird, crazy, awesome thoughts. Our future. Okay. In your sky, please, pleasure. Boom, shape, pleasure.